Hello, everybody, from a sun-soaked desert outside of Phoenix. We're here live with Garage Cam, and now I'm Chuck Bush, but here is your host of this fabulous show here today on NASCAR.com, the one, the only, Matthew Dilder. All right, here we go. What an intro for NASCAR.com. Garage Cam presented by Mobile One, and oh, we're live here streaming in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series garage, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, only one race to go till we know who the championship four will be heading into Homestead, Miami, Florida, Ford Championship weekend. You see this Ford right here of Ryan Priest getting set. We got to show you all the cars. We got a little hustle and do had a little technical difficulties. That's why we're starting a little late, but we're going to make it up. Ryan Priest uh, hoping to have a better run than he had at Mill Hill Stadium RC racing the other night, but the young Connecticut, Berlin, Connecticut driver uh, and his science, uh, um, machine trying to uh, do well here. First time here at Phoenix International Raceway, and Michael Annette, not a first timer here. It's Fast Friday, Matt, so we're going to see how uh, fast you can be today to get oh all of these cars in for all of our fans on NASCAR.com. Uh, and there's Ryan Priest. Hey, Ryan Priest. Hey, uh, we're, we're in a time crunch here, but we always stop to talk to Ryan Priest. Yeah, you got uh, it. How much better will you do today and this weekend? at Phoenix International Raceway than you did the other night racing an RC car in Kannapolis. Well, I hope I do a lot better. Uh, Science Energy Drink on board with us again. Uh, great sponsors, great energy drink, but yeah. I, You're kind of awful, need, dude. Yeah, I know. I, I think I needed, I needed an energy drink there because uh, we were just really bad. <laughs> All right, man. Phoenix, uh, you do anything fun? You go take pictures of any cactuses or, or do anything? interesting yeah yeah i walked out to the uh, credentials office earlier and it's quite a long walk and pretty much everything here in phoenix is a desert so it's uh it's interesting but it's not as hot as i thought it would be so that was that was a plus all right hydrate yeah absolutely ryan priest driver of the exeans uh energy drink number 98 is uh the rookie hey check it out it's the number seven car of alex bowman and hey it's ryan ellis I know Ryan Ellis wants to talk to us real quick. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. You know, really excited, obviously, to make my first start in the, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series here with the Science Logic number 33 for uh, Circle Sport Racing. It's going to be uh, really, really cool, and uh, can't wait to get on track, obviously. About 20 minutes left. How, how much is this is realizing a dream for you, you know, to come here? You're going to try to start a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race. It's, it's still not real. Um, I don't think practice will be real either because I've raced a lot of these guys. You know, that's the cool thing about the Xfinity Series Truck Series. I've raced with a lot of these guys before, but I know with Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, those guys are near me, it's going to be a whole other world. All right, so Ryan. I can't wait. Hey, and I hope uh, you do good, but I hope you suck the rest of the week in fantasy hockey. Hey. No. I'm, I'm playing you. <laughs> yes, really, and, I'm, and we're tied. Anyway, Landon Castle, the number 33. Great to see young Ryan Ellis making his debut. Landon Castle was pulling double duty this week, well, triple duty, because he was running last night, finished top five in the NASCAR k and Pro Series West race. But hey, we speaking of that, we have to talk about the son of this driver right here, David Gillen. Well, his son, Todd Gillen, put forth one heck of an effort last night, winning. 15 years old. He's a winner now in the NASCAR k and Pro West Series. Oh, Sean Howell, would you like, you'd like to see your favorite driver, David Gillen. Well, Sean Howell, there he is. And uh, what a successful uh, weekend so far for the Gillen family. Oh, I know they must be so happy, so proud of that fine young man, the performance that he had last night here at Phoenix International Raceway. And now daddy's got to back it up. <laughs> Cole Witt, the number 35. We got a motor through this garage area because we're running a little behind schedule. There's a lot of bees in here. I think it's because of the bright car, the bright color scheme of Brandt Professional Agriculture on the uh, Chevrolet of Justin Allgaier. Trevor Bain right alongside. And uh, hey, Trevor Bain, you know what was cool? Trevor Bain went hunting in between uh, Texas and here and actually uh, met a rattlesnake. Uh, didn't get bit, <laughs> but uh, did some successful hunting. David Reagan, the Aaron Stream Machine, and of course, the Mobile One car, and uh, the Mobile One is our proud sponsors of NASCAR.com, Garage Cam, and, uh, well, you can see my shadow there. You said... Uh, Thumbs up. You said Trevor Bain saw a rattlesnake? Yes. Well, Blaine Smith says, hi, Matt, from Windy, Connecticut. Can I see a rattlesnake? 
No, I'm not going to show you a rattlesnake. I don't want to. I buy won't one show either. you a rattlesnake, but I will show you Tony Stewart walking into his garage, all smiles, and the Mobile One driver. Um, hey, listen, he he's got some bite to him, so you can compare him to a rattlesnake in a way. GoBowling.com, the number nine, Sam Hornish Junior Machine, right next door. The Ricky Stenhouse Cargill Hello. beef. Oh, I love beef. I'm just creeping in and ruining your show. You just you just grab the microphone like you own the place. Baby. I do own the place. What you doing? I'm hanging out in Phoenix, having a blast. This is the coolest, one of my favorite tracks. Why? The Tell the race tracks. fans what's so cool about, about Phoenix. Phoenix. I just like the history here and the location with the mountains. It's so beautiful. So different from the East Coast where I grew up, so it's a lot of fun. And with Sprint out here, we have Direct to You, where we'll actually bring your new phone to where you live, where you work, where you tailgate. Yeah. So we'll set it up for you. So Sweet. if you're here in Phoenix, check out Sprint.com slash Direct to You. Uh, make sure you get this guy set up. I know. Yeah, he, he, he needs to get set up. He we looks got our, like he needs some We have our Sprint help. tablet, and our Sprint tablet told us that Louis Donato was the pole sitter, basically the first person in the interactive garage today on our Sprint tablet was Louis Donato. So congratulate Louis for his pole. Plus, congratulations on winning the poll. All right, there awesome. we go. Let's see, you know what? We're going to backtrack here because it's too cool not to. I don't care if we miss a few cars. Let's see if we can grab David Gillen here. The driver of this loves machine right here, David Gillen. Got to ask you last night, how special was last night? Uh, it's a little loud over here. Yeah. It was super special, probably one of the, the most special moments that we've had at a uh, at a racetrack for sure. With my son, my son winning his first K and N race. And, uh, I can't believe it's still actually. You know, I guess I made it for the youngest K and N winner ever too, and he already was the youngest ARCA winner. So, just really proud of what he's been able to accomplish. You know, it's um, you know God's given him a, a, a definitely a, an amazing ability and talent and. Um, you know, just the, the blessed us with the opportunity to, to to be able to put him in a race car and and run. So um, just very very special. Where were you watching the race from, and what was the moment like when he crossed the start finish line? Uh, it was cool. I was on top of the pit box and uh, <laughs> down down towards turn one. And man, it's I can't explain the emotions. And and uh, I wish I had a heart rate monitor on. I don't know if it went that high, but uh, but we <laughs> got close. It was it was crazy. It was incredible. But I had so we had so much family and friends here. A lot of people that I've drove for over the years and have supported me in my racing and uh, just couldn't have been a better weekend. All right, David Gillen, the driver of this, loves number 38 right here and his son, Todd Gillen, the big winner at the NASCAR k and Pro Series West, 15 years old, the youngest winner here at Phoenix International Raceway. What a great story that is. We had to run over there because I saw that yellow suit flashing by and there was no way that we could not talk to the proud papa David Gilland. What a great story that is in this garage area. So many people coming up to David Gilland and offering congratulations because that's a great family in this garage. When you get to know some of the people behind the scenes in this sport, you really get to know the true fabric of some of the folks that uh, race these cars and work on these cars here. The unsung heroes like these guys working on the Geico Chevrolet right here. Some great people in our garage area in our sport. And uh, we're, we're glad to tell those stories for you on NASCAR.com Garage Cam. Check out the camouflage car. I almost didn't see it. A, Austin Dillon's machine right here, the Chevrolet. Bad boy real tree on board. How close are we to halfway there, Haas? Well, it all depends on how you want to define halfway. Halfway Normal would be halfway in the show uh, would 15 be right minutes now. to the end. Okay, but we're 15 from the end. But for this show, since it's about a 20-minute show, because we got cut a little short due to technical difficulties, Halfway is going to be about three or four minutes. All right, there's Greg Bithel, Guardians.com. New paint scheme on board that 16 for this week here at Phoenix International Raceway for Greg Bithel. Another pattern, another week, another pattern. The number 42 of Kyle Larson. Man, is it going to be tough to show everybody here. Let's roll in here right now because the number 24 car is right here. And, of course, that Pepsi color scheme on the car is uh, something that's going to be a focal point all weekend long here at the Phoenix International Raceway. That's newly named the Jeff Gordon International Raceway. 
Uh, Louis DiDonato, you wanted to see your favorite driver. And there he is. Last race here at Phoenix. Already locked into the chase with his big win at Martinsville in Virginia at the paperclip. And what a great moment, one of the great moments of the year so far in NASCAR. And Jeff Gordon right now taking time to talk with one of his biggest fans, Kyle Busch. Guy yeah, that grew up, uh, you know, idolizing Jeff Gordon. And now they race together. And when Jeff won, Kyle Busch made a beeline to victory lane to congratulate the champ. Jeff Gordon, the number 24 crew, getting this Pepsi machine ready to go here for the first practice session. Pit box being rolled in here. We'll get out of the way. And there is the Pepsi Exalta machine and PR guy John Edwards right there looking things over. Swarms of media around some of these drivers because, hey, this is the last chance right here, the chase. Who will make it in? Only one driver locked in to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series finale at Homestead, Miami. LEC, Kevin Harvick, please. Well, there is your four-time consecutive winner here. Seven victories for Kevin Harvick here in the Valley of the Sun and four in a row. 1,202 laps led at the Phoenix International Raceway. So if you want to talk about statistics if you're a stat nerd, this is the guy that you want on your fantasy team is Kevin Harvick. But uh, can he... Uh, Make it five in a row. Can Martin Truex get a win here? I'll tell you what, sitting pretty in points. What a performance by this team at uh, Texas last week to put him in a great position here for the NASCAR chase for the Sprint Cup. Carl Edwards taking the time to talk to some photographers right here in the garage area in the Stanley Tools Toyota, a great season so far for Carl Edwards. And we'll see if we can get one question with Carl. A great season so far yep. for you. One race here to go before the uh, Homestead finale and Phoenix, man. You're the last person not named Kevin Harvick to win here. Right, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, it's always been such a good track. Um, but Kevin and that four team, they've been so good here. But this has been a great place for me. It's the first place I ever raced on pavement. We brought a USAC Silver really? Crown car out here. Copper World Classic? Yeah, it was or? awesome. 2001. And um, <laughs> and then I came back and drove for a guy the next year, slept out in a tent back off the back straightaway. Nice. And, uh, my buddy uh, Tom Calvin actually felt bad for me, gave me a motorhome to stay in the next night. And so this place always, to me, has been an adventure. It's been cool to come out here. I love it out here in the desert. And, and we feel real good about it. Um, our car wasn't that fast in the spring, so there's a little bit of anxiety knowing if we've you know what kind of gains we've made but couldn't be at a better track you got a carl edwards in the stanley crew they're going to try real hard here this weekend to put themselves in the final four as we like to say in the nascar chase for the sprint cup and uh carl edwards the missouri driver really wants to get back uh into that title contention and first year with this team with this crew here and uh with the joe gibbs organization uh it sure would be nice terry saying it would be nice if all car brands were in the final mix of the final four well that's that would be pretty cool we got a chevrolet already locked in it would be maybe cool to see a ford like brad keselowski one of the gibbs cars the toyotas or or um, yeah that would be cool but brad keselowski right here the miller light machine and there is brad keselowski walking to his car and then kurt bush kurt bush of course uh a winner here in 2005 Keselowski, 12 starts here. Best finish third last year. Joey Logano. Hello, Garage Cam. May I see the 20 of Eric Jones? Uh, well, yeah. Um, we will show you Eric Jones. Don, Donald Corbin, the number 22. You say, please. Well, I say, there you go. 13 races here, zero wins for Joseph Logano. His best, 2010, a third place finish. But hey, guess what? If you tune into NASCAR.com Race Buddy, you can see Joey Logano, Keselowski, the number four car of Kevin Harvick, 18 of Kyle Busch, uh, the 22 of Joey Logano here, Kurt Busch right here, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Those are your Race Buddy cars. So make sure you tune in on NASCAR.com. Watch the race, live leaderboard, watch the race on NBC. Have your laptop open because it's a darn cool way to do it. 
And here is the Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nationwide ride right alongside Denny Hamlin, a one-time winner here at the Phoenix International Raceway 2012 for Denny Hamlin. Next year, 2010 winner right here with a pretty cool paint scheme to show you. Right here, we got two in a row, three in a row of really neat paint schemes to show you, but the number 31 cat car, awesome looking scheme. James Johnson, AKA Jim Johnson, AKA Jimmy Johnson. Five time winner, of course, that big win, the upset, the spoiler last week at uh, Texas Motor Speedway, Jimmy Johnson, sealing that win in the late stages of the race. Oh, what a victory it was. Here's the guy who finished runner up the last time we were here at the uh, Phoenix International Raceway, Jamie McMurray, riding a hot streak of his own is this number one team and its driver. Last time we were here, like I said, this spring, his best finish, runner up. Eric Jones right next door. We had some requests from the young racer going for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series title this weekend. He has the point lead. Hello, Garage Cam. May I see uh, Eric Jones, says Art Robitaille. You related to Luke Robitaille? Just, just a question. I'm a hockey buff. But anyway, Eric Jones uh, has a lot of confidence here at this racetrack. Why? Well, because this is the place he, he started his career pretty much in the NASCAR ranks. Uh, so uh, you want to talk about performance here? He's, he's got some stats already for a young race car driver. Paul Menard, five minutes to go. Some cars are going to roll out early. I'm trying to hustle through to show you all the cars here. Glenn Boyer's five hour energy, number 15, right alongside. Right alongside the number 43 of Eric Amarola. And over here, let's show you the five car really quick of Casey Kane. For all you Casey Kane fans, including Krista Morrell, who gave me a shout out on Twitter using the hashtag GarageCam. Make sure you interact with us on NASCAR.com and on the chat room, but also social media. Oh, and you hear that noise right now. Cars firing up. A few cars will be rolling out here early. And actually, Jonathan Merriman is here with NASCAR.com. Hey man, there's a lot of scuttlebutt because this is a very historic chase for the championship in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and a lot of drama leading into this final elimination race. A lot of drama. We're going to have an up to speed on NASCAR.com. We're working on that now with drivers talking about the pressure situation. Ask Kurt Busch how this kind of related to 2004 at Homestead when he lost a wheel and he said it was similar except uh, as, you're, as you're circling around me, you're like a little tornado. Uh, he said it's it's the same situation except you have three elimination races and then a championship race, so it kind of repeats that in a total of four. Kevin Harvick said he wasn't nervous at all. You know, he's he's always playing playing mind games with people. We asked him about uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson at Dover. Jimmy dominates Dover, but a part failure took him out, and kind of asked him about that. He said he wasn't worried about anything other than what he could control, and he's owned this place. And and, and in closing, we got to make sure we get this in there. The Betty Jean France. Uh, humanitarian award. You want to make sure you go on NASCAR.com and vote for that. We have NASCAR.com slash, slash award. award. So perfect. Make sure you go on there and do that. It's a uh, it's a great thing. So, all right, Jonathan Merriman. Make sure you check out Up to Speed later on on NASCAR.com. Uh, Jonathan Merriman doing a great job as always uh, as our lead reporter here on NASCAR.com. Kim Coon with MRN PRN, excuse me, or MRN. Emeran, I got it right the first time. Anyway, I uh, also want to give a big shout out from the garage and from a lot of racers here uh, to a guy that's uh, healing up right now in Chester, Virginia, and that would be Lenny Pond, the uh, veteran of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, 17-year veteran uh, in our series, uh, 1973 Rookie of the Year, and of course he won that 1978 Talladega 500, but Lenny Pond uh, recovering at home after a little brain surgery to remove move a tumor. and. Uh, Fighting the good fight in Lenny Pond. Uh, there's a lot of racers in this garage, including myself, that uh, have a lot of respect for the people that came before us and paved the way for us. And it's drivers like you and drivers all throughout NASCAR that have done that. So thank you. Uh, hopefully you heal up pretty, uh, pretty good there and we're uh, pulling for you, Lenny Pond. Oh, they're about to unleash the beasts of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And we're in the middle of a hornet's nest right now as the cars begin to roll out in the Valley of the Sun. Championship contenders about 
the number 78 of Mark Truex Jr. Thirty-eight Sprint Cup Series races here. Two hundred different drivers have competed. Twenty-three winners. Who will put their name on the trophy next? If you put your name on the trophy and you're a championship contender, you might lock yourself into the final four at Homestead, Miami Speedway for Ford Championship Weekend. Will there be a repeat winner? Can Ryan Newman be a repeat winner here? There are eight different repeat winners here at the Phoenix International Speedway. None of them have held the checkered flag more than Kevin Harvick, the seven-time winner here at the Phoenix International Raceway. Eric Amarola gunning for his first win here in the desert of Phoenix. A one-mile oval, 312 laps, 500 kilometers set for you. As the cars and stars of the Spring Cup Series roll out underneath the famed Goodyear Bridge here, one of the iconic scenes of the garage area here at Phoenix International Speedway, of course. Rattlesnake Hill off in the distance behind some of these folks right here. Crew Chiefs up on the haulers getting ready for the opening laps of Sprint Cup Series competition here. Oh, practice is about to throw the green flag here in Garage Camp. It's getting you set up for that. Make sure you tune in to the NASCAR Xfinity Series Garage Camp, 1 p.m. local here in Phoenix. That's 3 p.m. for all you people on the East Coast, so make sure to tune in. Arizona, such a great history here in the sport. Such a great history in NASCAR, 42 different races in Arizona, 38 of them here. Four of them at the Arizona State Fairgrounds and one actually in a place, well, the Tucson Rodeo Grounds. Oh, will the rodeo be bucking people off and bucking people out of the chase this week? Indeed, because only four drivers will advance next week to Homestead Miami Speedway for championship weekend. The calm before the storm, you hear it right now. Cars are out on pit road, several of them. We'll bring you back here because I know we'd like to close the car, close this show with one heck of a cool shot. And you know what? Jeff Gordon has meant so much to this sport and done so much here. Two time winner here at Phoenix. And get this out of his 33 races, Jeff Gordon has finished in the top 10 23 times. So you want to talk about a pretty consistent effort here at the Phoenix International Raceway. Look no further than the number 24 Pepsi car. The pressure, is it on Kevin Harvick, the seven time winner here? Can he make it five in a row? That's the question, or will the pressure get to him? Or will something happen on the racetrack? You never know, and that's the drama. That is the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. I'm your host, Matthew Dillner. Until next time, we'll see you at the races.